welcome to the trading bank. My name is Noah Kipkumboy. Today, we are looking at the banking sector. We understand the importance of banks when it comes to running the economy of the country. They offer the much needed credit to be there. They make sure that the money supply is ongoing. But most importantly, is that um, they keep our financial sector stable in a way. And we'll take a look at that later on. And for our bank today that we are focusing on, Stan Big Bank, it is quite interesting looking at their 2021 report compared to 2020, which was a heavy, heavy industry, and 2019 also. We saw quite a shift amongst those three years. And now we're in the year 2022. You ask yourself, what will shape the banking industry moving forward? I will be having a conversation with Charles Mudiwa, who is the CEO of Stanbic Bank Kenya, to help us understand their performance and their outlook into the future and what they're doing in the society to make sure that the lives of their customers are made better. So before we do much, let's take a look at his profile, shall we? Charles Mudiwa is a business leader with expertise in the financial sector. His vast experience of over 20 years includes setting up a bank from scratch as well as leading stock exchange listed financial institutions. He is currently the CEO at Stanbic Bank Kenya. His key achievements include successfully setting up Agricultural Bank of Zimbabwe, Agribank, launching of the first interbank financial inclusion product in South Africa, growing the Standard Bank Malawi from bank number three to number one on profit after tax, and being recognized as the Banker Magazine Bank of the Year for six years in a row. Best Employer 2011 and Best Equal Opportunity Employer. Charles is passionate about making change in every environment he works in. All right, a very accomplished man, Mr. Charles Modiwa is, and I'm honored to have him with us today. Welcome to the Trading Bell. Well, thank you very much. It's great to see you as well. And okay. Welcome to our viewers. Wow, amazing. So, I mean, 2021 yeah. was that year that was poised to be the year of recovery. Mm -hmm. After what we went through in the year 2020, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of people innovating mm -hmm. uh, in all sectors. Mm -hmm. It was sort of an eye opener. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at your 2021 results of standing, mm -hmm. I mean, 39% up in terms of profit after tax. Mm -hmm. What really, what really shaped this jump? Um, thank you very much. And um, I'm, as you have said, um, 2021 was a different year. Um, mixed year, I would say. Uh, first and foremost, we all didn't expect COVID to run into 2021, uh, which it did. I mean, I remember when we started COVID in March 2020, everybody was like, by September, it will be done. But of course, we went in 2021. So it was a mixed year. But I think what is more important is that we all started to accept what I call normalized deviation which is how do we live with COVID? And I think that's the biggest thing. So the biggest shape change that happened for us was a change of mindset to understand that we are now living in a COVID world and we have to manage and run our business in a COVID world. So, so we moved from, which was the initial thing where we said, how do we deal with restoring our business uh, into rebound and think about a strong rebound that we wanted to do with. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things shaped our business. Number one, was we started to focus more on our customers and trying to drive scale around our customers. So if you look at it, we saw a 20% growth on customers year on year. Um, secondly, we invested quite a bit of money in digital transformation, and we started to see the impact of digital. For example, 85% of our new customers were onboarded digitally. Mm -hmm. So that allowed us to scale up the customer's growth. Mm -hmm. So we saw ourselves onboarding four times the number of customers in 2021 a day than we're doing in 2020. So that allowed us to change that. Um, the other thing, of course, we saw an improvement in our portfolio with our NPL ratio now moving from about 11, 11.48% to 9.25. So you could see the quality of the book also improving. So you had a combination of customer growth, combination of digital capability, and then, of course, improved quality of book. 
Then the last thing is that we started to create a more impact in society, which brought more trust with our customers. Mm -hmm. So we signed agreements, for example, with uh, counties, with central government, where we started to work in communities and make a big difference. I mean, you probably saw us doing the uh, Nakuru Marathon, mm -hmm. I think where we did uh, quite a lot of things then in terms of that. We, we're working in the markets now, uh, starting to do things in Gikomba and other places. So that allowed us to create that huge shift in our business. That, that's quite interesting because all of those factors that you mentioned, mm -hmm. they're they are quite heavy yeah. to come think of them. But uh, I'll just like us to take a little bit of a back look mm -hmm. into the way you guys were performing pre-COVID. Yeah. yeah, and the way you know your performance, the profit after tax, especially mm -hmm. pre-COVID, looking at 2018, 6.3, mm -hmm. then 6.4 in 2019. Then there was a drop, of course, with 2020. Yeah. You understand what happened globally to 5.2 mm -hmm. billion shillings. Then now you are even stronger. Mm -hmm. You talk about deviation yeah. in the banking sector, and you've mm -hmm. mentioned those ones mm -hmm. that you've mentioned. I mean, what is, what is shaping the banking sector, especially during this period, mm -hmm. overall as an industry? What has really changed from your observation? I think two key things have changed. Number one, the customer behavior has changed. Our customers are now much more focused on, on three key issues. They are now a lot more focused on, first and foremost, on the experience. I mean, they want to have a great experience in terms of how they do. Secondly, they are now a lot more focused on value. I'm sure all of us after COVID all became aware of how much I spend on what. So value is a critical thing in terms of our customers. But then there's also a big piece that has also changed, which is around safety. Our customers also worry about where they put their money and that the little that they have is protected. So you, you have to think about what experience am I giving customers, which breeds into trust and how they work with you and how you deepen relationships with them. And you start talking about what value are you giving them? because they are not prepared to pay for what, more than what they should be paying for. Mm. And how do you bring safety to that? So that's the thing that is kind of shift that. Now, supporting that, then you now find we have to deal with uh, issues around digital capabilities. How is technology shaped uh, things that we do? So we found, for example, as you see, we saw a huge growth in our customers opening accounts themselves. Even our lending book now, we are almost lending 60% of it's happening digitally. Mm -hmm. So we, before you'd go to a branch, fill in a form, go to credit, wait that. Now we, instead of getting 48 hours or even two days that we used to do before, you're getting your application done in five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's a huge shift. To open an account, you go into a branch, see a consultant, they fill in a form, and they tell you, okay, we'll, we'll send you the account number after a few days. Mm -hmm. Now, sitting at home, in the comfort of your own home, on your own phone, five minutes, your account is opened. Wow. So that is shifted, mm -hmm. and that has shifted a lot of behavior of that. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I keep talking about safety mm -hmm. is because we also saw a bit of cyber coming through, and people are becoming increasingly conscious of cyber threats and risks arising from that. So safety is important for customers, and they are very much alert to the importance of safety. And we saw quite a lot of social engineering creeping into the market during the course of the year. Oh, that, that's quite interesting. Customer centricity yeah. seems to be foundational. And that has been always the narrative in the world of business. Yeah, yeah. The customer is king. Yeah. So if the customer changes, you also change. Yeah. And uh, I mean, looking, looking, you've spoken about lending vis-a-vis yeah. uh, -vis, um, you know, the number of people who are onboarding digitally, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. But I, I, I want to take a look at... Um, the loans, yeah, yeah which mm -hmm. you advance to this to these customers, yeah. uh, because you understand credit is v very critical, yeah. especially in this recovery mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I looked at your at, at the way you performed, and our loans advanced moved from one hundred and ninety six billion mm -hmm. to two hundred and twenty nine, mm -hmm. and uh, that is that is quite a jump, mm -hmm. uh, especially in um, in a more risk or a riskier environment mm. with COVID mm. and uh, also looking at the nature of your loan. Mm. Uh, so maybe expand for us, where was this loan mostly advanced? Was it on small businesses and why that tries in loans amid such a year? Um, what, what actually happened is that during COVID everybody kind of withdrew back and remember we also had huge issues with supply, logistics, I mean supply chain issues, uh, so a lot of businesses, actually in some ways, some of them shrank. We all took a, a look-see approach. 
But then 2021, as we all kind of started to do restoration out of COVID and start to say, how do we prepare ourselves for rebound? We saw also credit demand growing as well. Um, so as a result of that, we also see our customers coming up back and say, wait, well, you know what, I actually want to do this. So we had a pent up demand that was holding and a lot of people were wanting to finish some of the projects they wanted to do. So we saw that coming through in our customer book. And so we, as you say, we saw our asset book growing by 17% mm -hmm. during the same period because our customers started to fulfill and submit some of their demands and the orders that they had before, which was a really great thing mm -hmm. I mean, for us, which helped, of course, uh, show that loan book growth. In, in regards to deposits, because mm -hmm. from my understanding, our deposits portray confidence in yeah. your system, in your bank. If I entrust you with your money, mm -hmm. uh, that is very critical. And that particular tenant, uh, we saw a marginal drop mm -hmm. on your end. But uh, maybe explain to us the, the reason behind this slight drop and what exactly does it portray? Okay. Um, I, I suppose what, what we're talking about here is that when you look at deposits, we're two big drivers. Mm -hmm. One was deposits from banks and then deposits from customers. Mm -hmm. I think the big driver for us is the deposits from customers, which we saw increasing by 11% during the course of the year, and which is the, the level of confidence that we're talking about, that customers actually brought in more money to us, and therefore we had to reduce the deposit from banks, because as you know, those tend to be much more pricier, mm. and therefore it's just that we had to redo the rebalancing act. Oh. Um, and, and this is supported when you look at the metrics by the growth in our what you call primary customers and active customers. Our customers were using us more and we saw that growth by 35% which is the primary customers. Now there's the customers who, who call us their main bank. That number grew by 35%. All right. Yeah. That's very important to know. We, uh, and slightly going again back to credit, mm -hmm. which is very critical. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, a lot of disruption yeah. uh, in terms of the credit ecosystem mm -hmm. with COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a call uh, from the regulator for mm -hmm. banks to issue moratoriums to, yeah, yeah. to you know, their customers. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, that was over. In terms of support, because your NPL ratios actually have come down. Yeah. Uh, talk to me how you're able to reduce those ratios, uh, especially supporting customers to be able to get back to, to repaying their, their credit. Um, interestingly, you know, what else happened to our customers, which is a very good thing, is that a lot of our customers, when COVID happened, they also, the same way we're re-engineering our businesses, our customers also re-engineered their businesses. Mm -hmm. So we, we saw them also read, I mean, even you guys, I saw you re-engineered your business too, a brand new studio, yes. and looking good and shiny. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pity we're not doing it here today, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to going there one day. Definitely. But, but like everybody else, we all re-engineered our businesses and recreated them. So our customers also re-engineered them. And, and I'll give you one example. We had one customer who, during before COVID, they were, they were, they were dental surgery. And um, when COVID happened, no one wanted to come to see the dentist. And they re-engineered themselves to start supplying, you know, medical equipment. So they moved from just being a dentist to supplying medical equipment. And we financed them to a new business model. Mm -hmm. So we saw a number of customers creating a new business model arising from COVID. And that allowed them to re-engineer themselves and start to do things differently. Mm -hmm. And that then allowed us to finance them in that way. The second thing that is also important that happened is that we also saw a lot of customers stepping in the gap of the imports that were coming in. Because we remember we bring bringing things. So if you think about it, the first few days of COVID, we're importing, I mean, what, face masks? Mm -hmm. But by the time we get to mid-2021, we're not importing any face masks. They're all being locally manufactured. In fact, some of them are very nice, actually. Mm -hmm. so, so we saw customers rising up the occasion to re-engineer themselves and redo their businesses and recreate their businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking to one customer of mine who is in the, um, in the food industry. I mean, before COVID, I mean, they were running restaurants all over town. But after COVID, they're now saying 20% of their volume is actually delivered foods. 
That's all re-engineering that happened. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we started lending money to new types of businesses that came up when they re-engineered as a result. And we supported our customers through that journey. When the customer is shifting, you're shifting with them. Yes. And it's not good to assume that, oh, you know, we as a bank, we're evolving, we're investing in technology, and our customer is just there. They're also evolving in their own right. And you have to pay attention to that. Yes, and also we walk that journey with them. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that also happened, remember we talked about customer centricity earlier on. Customer centricity means you have to partner with the customer and walk the journey with them. And as they shift their business, you also adjust and shift to their business accordingly. Very important. Very but in, important. But in Kenya, when we look at majority of the businesses mm -hmm. that are in this country, they fall, of course, under the macro, small and medium mm -hmm. size enterprises. Mm -hmm. These are the majority. Mm -hmm. And credit has always been an issue. In fact, uh, risk-based pricing is really being pushed. Yeah, And uh, in terms of advancing credit to this key mm -hmm. critical area, mm -hmm. As a bank, mm. have you been intentional enough to look at that ecosystem, the challenges mm. that it faces, mm. the kind of risks that are in mm. that space, mm. and now how you can advance credit uh, to their level to support them? Oh, yeah. We, we, it's one of the things that actually we also did during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we did three initiatives during that period. The first one, as you know, we launched DADA. I mean, we launched it just before COVID 2019, but it, it, it saw a lot of that during COVID. And as a result, Dada is targeting women. Mm -hmm. And it's very intentional and supportive around supporting women businesses. So we're very clear and intentional around how do we support SMEs run by women. And it started with us looking at women in the markets. We are now even looking at how do we support women who buy from us, mm -hmm. where we offer the market as a bank. So that was the first thing. The second thing that we also did was to look at SMEs in broad and we've set up a unit uh, a brand new unit which actually looks at SMEs and focuses on SMEs to support SMEs and grow with them mm -hmm. then the third thing that we did is through our foundation which we set up during COVID is that we've identified some funding so we've got what we call catalytic funding which are coming up and this one I particularly this is system close to my heart because what we saw is that during COVID a lot of businesses the small business, it's by the SMEs that you spoke about, mm -hmm. struggled a lot because why? Because their capital was, I mean, they literally, to use a vernacular word, ate away their capital. Mm -hmm. Because remember, if you think about it, if I'm selling tomatoes in the market, um, the markets are shut down, the little money that I have, what am I going to do? I'll buy bread with it. Mm -hmm. So when markets opened, they did not have money. Now, we have arranged some money that we've put aside, and basically what we're saying is we're giving these small business loans, not big loans, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, up to about 100,000. And we're giving them capital to start. And this money is coming at 2%. 1, 2. 2%. 2%. And Wow. To support them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've given out 33 million shillings worth of such loans. Mm -hmm. So we actually are very focused on that sector. And we're working with, we've signed, we've signed agreements now with the counties. And uh, so we're working in five counties so far and we're expanding it. Uh, you're asking about Kisumu. Mm -hmm. That's why we went to Kisumu. Right. Because one of the things that we're doing there is to start that process in them. We're in Meru, we're in Nanyuki, we're in Nakuru, uh, we're in Mombasa, we did Kisumu. So we're actually expanding that. And we find a lot of enthusiasm, excitement and support as we give these small businesses an opportunity to sign. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we, we are part of one of the banks that, was, that is part of the credit guarantee scheme launched by the president, I'm sure as you know. Mm -hmm. That's also giving funding to SMEs to ensure that we support them. So, yes, SMEs are the core of what we do Definitely. because we do realize that if we're not supporting SMEs in Kenya, then you are not in play. That's true. Yes. You've mentioned counties. I yeah. mean, these are the building blocks of our country. Yes, exactly. Uh, devolution is not that old in the country. Yeah. And uh, seeing banks, because banks have been, for the longest time, when, when you go to the grassroots, either you're dealing with a circle, mm. you know, a microfinance, mm. and the big names like Stanbic, mm. they have been known to be, you know, national players, mm. international players. Mm. So in terms of how critical is it to go down to these counties? And so far from your assessment, uh, you're in five counties you've mentioned. Mm, yeah. Do you feel uh, our county level in terms of reaching people to, to the very grassroots, uh, it's, it's, been, it, it's been a little bit low um, from, from your assessment? 
Actually, I think there's a lot of work that happens in the counties. Mm -hmm. um, I think they should tell their story. I mean, there's a lot of work that I've seen on the ground. I've actually personally spent days and time in the markets. I'm actually seeing what happens then, working with the people. And there's a lot of activity that's happening there. But also what we appreciate is the volume of activity that's happening there and how much livelihoods are supported by the people in the counties. Mm -hmm. So whether you go to Gikomba Market, whether you go to Wakulima Market, everywhere you see, you see a lot of activity in those markets. Or Marikiti, you see a lot of activity that's happening there. Mm -hmm. and, and our strong belief is that if you think about what is trading in the markets, there's a lot of trading for agricultural commodities. Yes. I mean, how do we all buy our vegetables? Through the markets. The farmers are producing and you've got the traders in the markets and we need to support those markets. And for us, that's one of the key things that we believe we can make a big difference. Working through those markets, working with those people in the markets, supporting them, I mean, with this uh, catalytic funding, as we call it, mm. uh, or I call them shoe shine loans, mm. you know, they just allow you to start up. Mm. but they get you to where you want to be. You, you've mentioned the digital strategy, which is very important. Mm. Um, I mean, looking at the year 2022, mm. especially locally, mm. it's, it's quite a mixed bag, to mm. be honest, mm. because um, it's an election year. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, we are having sort of hits from all over. Mm. I mean, what is happening in, in Russia, Ukraine conflict mm. is trickling down mm. to, 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 to our economy. We are feeling mm. some bits of it. So from, from the banking sector, you're looking at the 2022 outlook. Mm. What do you think will, will shape this sector? And uh, how, do you, how do you foresee uh, the, the banking sector remaining strong? What will be that anchor point for this year? Well, I think like, like typically in a banking sector, I mean, what drives a bank? I mean, number one is how you keep your customers. Mm -hmm. So we have to put customers in the center of what we do. Mm -hmm. Support our customers through this. I mean, we already know oil and gas has gone up and it has a trickle down effect which will of course impact inflation. Mm. So there's a trickle down impact which might also put pressure on the currency. Yeah. So, so we, we, we see these factors and drivers coming through as you start dealing with that. So how do we support our customers through this journey? Because in as much as we, yes, we are a bank, but we actually have customers who are importers of wheat. We have customers who are importers of oil. We've got customers who are exporters of flowers, let's say, to Russia. Mm -hmm. So how do we start to support those customers through this journey? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is support our customers to go through this journey. All right. um, the second thing is to ensure that we are well capitalized as a bank and that we are also well funded. And that's something that we constantly manage. And then, like any bank, liquidity is important for a bank. Mm -hmm. Are we liquid enough to manage that? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, during this period you know, when you've got issues like this coming up you also still need to manage your risks right. and the biggest one that we worry about in terms of managing is how do you manage cyber risk okay yeah definitely i think that will be very critical uh, for these years you've mentioned working with your customer yes amidst all this thank yes. you for that uh, you know wonderful input for us to understand your business and your outlook and your vision okay. and your customer support yeah. working with them each and yes. every single day through thick and thin. I think bank, banks and their customers is like a marriage, you know, in sickness and in health. True. We're still together. Yes. Thank you very much. But sir. you see why our logo is a shield. Yes. We're there with you all the way. Uh, we'll hold that shield for you. Definitely. Yes. And we'll carry your flag anytime. Wow. That's yes. beautiful. <laughs> Charles Mudiwa, CEO, Stan Big Bank, Kenya. Amazing. I mean, key takeaway work with your customer amidst all these forces that we're seeing globally, work with your customer. That's the most important takeaway. Well, this particular moment, let's take a look at the market, shall we?